we need to make sure that we are being sensitive to the Spirit, not just the words, the letters on the pages of the scriptures, but the meanings of those words. So not the literal words, but the meanings of the words. If we only listen to the words, but don't understand the meaning behind those words, then we cannot understand what is it that they're trying to communicate to us. And that's what leads to miscommunication, misunderstanding. And it often crops up in the course of ordinary communication. When you try to tell somebody something, and to your surprise that, and even annoyance, that they keep picking up on the phrases, figures of speech, even individual words in a quite unreasonable way. For example, some people think that they understand Buddhism completely based on what they observe, not based on their research or their in-depth study of Buddhism. And so therefore they wrongly conclude that Buddhists are superstitious people. They are just statue idolizers and they are escapists. They're selfish, they're pessimists. And you keep telling them, no, Buddhism is not about escapism, but they don't understand that. All they see is, yeah, Buddhism is about seeing the world as suffering and to be liberated from suffering, to escape from this world. And you keep telling them, no, Buddhism is not about escaping from this world, but they keep picking on those words. Then they come to their own conclusions and they're not listening to what you're trying to say. So don't see the value of Buddhism. They don't see that in the Eightfold Path, the teaching is on merit cultivation. And what merit cultivation is to help other people. And they choose to ignore that. Apparently, if they look deep in the Eightfold Path, they should see right speech, right karma, right livelihood. All those things bring benefits to society and to those around the practitioners. And they don't see that there is a profound transformation in the practitioner, transforming a mundane person to a truly individual, not just a unit in a mass, but a true individual who understands between wrong and right and who can make up his or her own mind. And furthermore, it leads to transcendental, unsurpassed wisdom and compassion. So those are the things that they don't see and they choose not to see because it is all based on their observations and not their in-depth study of Buddhism. So that's miscommunication. So there is no real communication. There is no understanding. Even for us, when we practice the Pure Land Method and we want to have rebirth in Sukhavati, but we're not willing to transform our own being to be consistent with the life in Sukhavati meaning that we are not resonating with the ideals, with the life in Sukhavati. We should have our lives consistent with how the bodhisattvas in Sukhavati live. That is true understanding. If we only see the words in the sutras, and we see that in Sukhavati there is only joy, no suffering, foods and clothes appear as desired, and we are resonating with only that, then we are not truly communicating. We are not truly understanding the Dharma. We are only desiring the sweet fruits without putting in the corresponding labor required, right? the efforts required. So that's not understanding. That is misunderstanding of the sutras. Communication is possible only on the basis of openness and receptivity. If we really want to understand and we are open to communication and we have attention, we have awareness of what's being communicated to us, then we will be able to understand its meaning. But if we want to pick certain words and, and certain things that we like to focus on and not understand the meanings behind the words, then we will not be able to understand the spirit. We only can see the letter, but not the spirit. So what the second reliance on is that don't just look at the words. For example, the sutra says, there's only joy, no suffering, and that's what we're attracted to, but we don't see the criteria behind it. And the criteria for rebirth in Sukhavati are joyful faith and to live according to the teachings in the sutra. 
This applies to ordinary day-to-day -day communication, to one's communication with one's spiritual friends, also to one's study of scriptures. One should rely on the meaning of the Dharma, not on ex expressions in words or phrases. Otherwise, one is in danger of becoming a mere scholar of Buddhism. Someone who may have the letter of the Dharma at their fingertips, but who does not come within a million miles of its spirit. To understand the spirit of the teaching, we should avoid literalism. In the sutras, they were written thousands of years ago, and we should understand the meanings behind the words. If we don't understand the meaning and we don't catch the spirit of what's in the sutra, then we will not be able to maintain long-term interest. And the reason for losing interest is because of either fear of commitment or lack of commitment. And the reason behind lack of commitment is because there is no appreciation of the value of the Dharma. And the value of the Dharma is in its merits and virtues. The only way for us to appreciate its merits is to apply Buddhism in our lives. If we're not willing to apply Buddhism in our lives, then we will not be able to realize its merits, the fruits of our practice. Therefore, the value of Buddhism is, as mentioned earlier, in attaining peace by stopping everything from ignorance to old age, death, sorrow, lamentation, misery, anxiety, and trouble. So that's the value of Buddhism. When we apply Buddhism in our lives, we can avoid fear. We can avoid the suffering of old age, death, sorrow, lamentation. It doesn't mean that we won't grow old, but it means that growing old does not matter to us. It does not affect us. So that's the second reliance is on the meanings of the sutra and not on the literal expression of the words. Mm -hmm.